welcome everyone to TGD TV and of course coverage of the majors here on the golfdirector.com. This is George Honeycutt and as always Mr. Hugh Roy the third. Hugh, thanks for joining us here on coverage of the majors. Good morning, George. Thank you, sir. Special guest with us today also, Dr. Grind, Al Cloyd. Good to see you, Al. Good to be here. Well, of course, we're talking about Augusta National. There's nothing finer. Nothing finer. I, I wore the uh, the Augusta outfit today. Why you shake your head? I just, only uh, only I could pull off this shade of green. Just the vest. <coughs> Those things went out in 1992. Well, that's all I've got in my closet, so I'm sorry. You still look good, though. Coverage of the majors. Let's do Augusta it. Augusta National. The Here Masters. he is, the okay. Cinderella boy. Cinderella story. Tears in his eyes at Augusta. <laughs> <laughs> He's got about he's got about two hundred and forty yards. He's gonna hit a nine iron. Yeah. Oh, it's in the hole. Oh, he got all that one. Oh, it's in the hole. It's in the hole. He got all that one. It's in the hole. It's miraculous. <laughs> Let's talk. We our last coverage of the majors, Hugh. We went hole by hole by hole. We we've given a full description of the golf course, how to play the front nine, how to play the back nine. What I wanted to go into today for our listeners is start talking a little bit about the players, the tournament itself, some of the history maybe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've come up with a, a few little tidbits of, of information that you may not know. Likewise, I think you have some for me. Uh, Al probably knows it all, so uh, we, we'll just exclude him from the answers. So uh, I don't want him to win the prize. Oh, uh, so, you know, he can win. He wins anyway. Well, that's true. That's true. Uh, quick question for you. See if you guys know this. Over the entire history of Augusta, which hole at Augusta National has played the hardest? Over all of the, of the quote-unquote, master tournaments since 1935, which hole has played the hardest? My guess would be number 11. Good guess. It's not right, but good guess. If I had, I'd say, I would, I would have picked like you, number 11, or possibly four. Or number four. Oh, good. Another good guess. Really good guess. Actually, it's number 10, folks. Number 10. Number 10. Uh, it's played to a stroke average of 4.32 wow. over the entire history wow. of the tournament. Didn't... The lowest it's ever played was in 1995 at 4.12, and the highest it's ever played to was in 1956 at 4.69. So number 10, number 11 finished second. Yeah. Number 11 and they made them both finished 40 second. yards longer. And number four finished tied third. Okay. Okay. So great guesses, guys. Well done. Thank you. Congrats. Very much. Congrats. Yeah. What is the stroke average for the history of Augusta? What's Ooh. the stroke average for the history of Augusta? And for our listeners out there and those of you on TV, uh, write these down. These are great, great trivia questions to, to pull out during your party as you're watching the Masters. Now, you talking four days or one day? Oh, I'm talking for the entire tournament. For the four days of the tournament. The individual, just, just state individual average daily score. I would okay. say 71.3. 71.3. I say uh, 72 5. 74.17. Yeah. 74.17. Back in the day, the scores were high around Augusta to win. <laughs> Isn't, that Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? I mean, for the entire history of Augusta, it has averaged two shots over par. That's pretty amazing. That's, it is. That speaks so highly of this, the only golf course that year after year after year hosts a major championship. That's yeah. correct. You know what? I mean, all the others, they travel to Valhalla, Torrey Pines, wherever it may be. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> the Open, the PGA, you know, they, they travel, they play the different courses. Of course, most of them are in a quote-unquote cycle or routine. But Augusta is that golf course that every, every, every year. I mean, these players know this place. They know every blade of grass on this place. They live and eat and sleep Augusta. And the funny part is when they go and change something, you don't ever know they changed it. That's what's so cool about yeah. it. It all looks the same. I saw the know? satellite image the other day of the Ike tree there. that was replaced. No, they did replace it. Oh, goodness, yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can't even tell. It, it's it's absolutely amazing. Mm. They've got the sod back in. It's already there's no seams. It's it's already. Oh, you'll it, never know it was even. You'll gone. never know mm. except for mm. the plaque. Yeah, they put a plaque. 
I guess. Yep. So, Isn't that amazing? That is absolutely amazing. The tree they replaced it with was actually like a 75-year-old tree. They, they got it at a farm uh, up toward Thomaston. Yeah. And evidently, they had been planning for this emergency for some time, and they went and paid this farmer a certain amount of money for this tree. And this guy kept it and did everything was necessary to do. I mean, I, we had all heard that. We yeah. knew that they had one picked out. Now, Jeff, I got a question for you. All right. Get right on me. <laughs> Who oh, yeah. wrote the theme song for Augusta for the Masters? Uh, Loggins. Kenny Loggins' third cousin. Third cousin. Mm hmm. Dave Loggins. It's Kenny Loggins' third, third cousin. cousin. Heather came up with that one. Wow. She sent that, texted that to me. That's why I was going, kind of running through my phone real quick while George was talking. To, she wanted me to make sure you knew that one. Cool. Yeah. So, love that. An absolutely, an absolutely amazing place. Um, I've only had the opportunity to go one time, which was last year for the practice round. Yeah. But uh, you know, a friend of mine before we left, he said, "Listen, he says, he said, I'll give you five dollars for every weed you pull." And bring back to me. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't find one. Uh, you know you, what? You're not going to find one. You're not no. going to. I come in one AC, you know, coming back and just jumping off the side you, of the road and grabbing oh, a few and sticking oh, it, you know, in a bag. Yeah. I would have filled up a garbage bag. At least to get the gas money. Anyhow, oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, so, but but I, I couldn't do it. You well, know, I, I tell you, you I tell you, you should have done that. And you can, relate to, you can relate to this one. My father-in-law, God rest his soul, when he was diagnosed with cancer, um, Dr. Charlie Martin, the Baptist minister from Charleston, Leanne's grandfather, uh, my stepdaughter, um, took Bill to Augusta. And when they walked past the scoreboard and he walked between the ropes and he looked up at one tee and he turned around and looked right at number one green, bent down on his knees and kissed the ground and cried like a baby because that's the first time he'd ever been there. Oh, yeah. You know, and being diagnosed with what he was, he was just so thankful. I mean, it was just like, Well, the know, first time I went, list, the first, yeah, first time I went, I was in the military, actually, and, uh, you know, higher handicapper or whatever, and I just got invited to Augusta. And... I really didn't have the love and, the, and you know, the uh, attraction to the history of it or whatever. I just, I went with this individual. And when I walked on the property, I had tears in my eyes. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it was, almost, on Earth. It was it almost like watching your child being born. I mean, and, and I didn't have the passion for it. I didn't have the love. Right. And, but then since then... Oh, my goodness. Just Katie bar the door then. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, you know, of course, I've told you, uh, Hugh, that uh, she who must be obeyed, she's got the written directions. You know, I'm to be cremated and then flown over Augusta and spread out. So uh, Yeah, hopefully she won't, the pilot won't get shut well, down. The, but, the pilot know. will get arrested, but that's, <laughs> that's a whole other issue. He can deal with that. What do that's I his care? problem. What yeah, do I that's care? That's his problem. <laughs> I'm, dust, I'm dust in the wind. That's you right. know what I mean? I'm Definitely. dust in the wind. So uh, i got another little trivia question for you, so folks. Uh, uh, again, get ready to write it down. With those players that have recorded 100 or more rounds at Augusta, 100 or more rounds at Augusta, who has the lowest stroke average of any of those players? He has played 108 rounds. I'm gonna what is his stroke average? I'm going to be stupid and say Tiger. Okay. And I say his stroke average is probably around 68. A hundred or more rounds, who has the lowest stroke average? I don't know. I'd almost go back to the old times, possibly Bobby Jones. Okay. Freddie Couples. Cupcakes. Freddie Couples. Freddie Couples. 71.89. His best score at Augusta, 66. Yeah. In second place at 71.98. So a tenth of a point higher is Jack Nicholas. Okay. He has 163 rounds. His best round at Augusta, 64. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting stuff, huh? Very, very interesting. Now, yeah. those with less than 100, you're talking 75 to 99 rounds. Uh, you get into Phil Mickelson has the lowest stroke average at 70.97. He has 78 rounds. His best round is 65. Um, interestingly, in that group, all that group collected together, Greg Norman has the lowest round recorded in that group of 75 to 99 rounds at 63. Okay. That's, that's, that's golfing your ball at Augusta. Yeah, because Nick Price just shot 63 there before too. And then when you jump down into the 50 to 74 rounds that played at Augusta, there comes Tiger at 70.87 with 70 rounds recorded. His best score to date has been a 65. Yeah. 
So uh, that's a little bit of interesting tidbit of information for you. So uh, we can go back up. Uh, Hugh, didn't you have a... I do. Uh, most, some... most masters participated in, played in. Who is it? Okay, I... You know. You, you take it. I know. You take a guess. Played um, in the most masters. Played in the most masters. Um, Palmer... No, nope. GP Gary Player. Gary, Gary Player at fifty-two. You have Mr. Palmer who played fifty years in a row. In a row, okay. consecutively. Okay. consecutively. Consecutively in a row. In a row. Well, well done, yeah. though. Yeah, thank well, you. Very good guess, but like yeah. from what was it, say nineteen fifty-five through two thousand four. That's 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 awesome. So, you know, it's kind of some neat stuff. I mean, you know, oh, Mr. definitely. Um, Who's made the cut the most? That's a real good question. Most cuts made at Augusta. KJ Choi. No. <laughs> <laughs> KJ. Tonjai Jaidi. He played in his first one. He ain't going to be able to. Tonjai. He, he, you know what? There's no reason to put toilet paper in his uh, no. room that night. He won't, he won't be able to wipe, but reach back there and wipe. No. He's going to be so cinched up. Uh. <laughs> Him and Patrick Reed, number five player in the world. Good. Most cuts made. By participants of Augusta National. I have no clue. Jack Nicholas at 37. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gary Player is second at 30. Raymond Floyd at 27. Freddie Couples at 26. Arnold Palmer at 25. Ben Crenshaw at 25. Tom Watson at 24. And Billy Casper at 23. Wow. Most consecutive cuts made. That is a good question. That's really good. Most Consecutive cuts made. Go back to most tournaments played. Yeah. Mr. Player. Gary Player. Gary Player. Consecutive cuts made, 23. Tied with Freddie Couples. How about that? That's impressive. Cupcakes plays good there. I'm telling he, you. Uh, well, it's like I said last week on coverage of the majors. Look out. First two days. Boom Boom yeah. is going to be at or top of the leaderboard at Augusta. Mm -hmm. And then he gets tired. Yeah. He did. And you noted that last week. Yeah. I think one, one interesting thing about Augusta is everybody that's in the field has a chance of winning the tournament. It's, you know, it's, it's, it, it's a very, very interesting tournament. It, oh, it, well, the best part is just watching, like we talk about. Once they get to the back nine on Sunday, who's going to throw up on themselves well, first? Look, look at know? look at who has you know made their moves and their charges. I mean, we go back to Jack in '86. Okay, I mean he basically came from five shots back. Exactly. And and to take over. And realistically, he didn't think his charge was going to even make a make a he. Yeah. After he came through Amen Corner, he really didn't think he had enough in the tank to get there. But then when he birdied 15, and then when he birdied 16, and, you know, all of a sudden, then he's going, you know, and his son is sitting there on the bag, and his son's going, you know what? We could win this doggone thing. You know, and here he was. Everybody that was ahead of him was coming backwards. And that's what's the beauty of Augusta, is everybody was coming backwards. Look at, you know, look at last year. Look at Adam Scott. Look at Angel Cabrera. Look at you know. Look at those two going oh, yeah. down. That was an awesome playoff. Uh, look at Bubba way. Watson. Was... Look at Bubba Watson and his playoff. That was an unbelievable um, shot. You know, people started coming back to him. Yep. People started coming, and so that's the beauty of Augusta. That's that's the back nine on Sunday afternoon. Absolutely. When that's where the tournament is is won or lost. However, you've got as I noted last week, and you agreed with me for three and a half days. You still got to be up there to even be in the running. Be honest with you, you got to get through the first round because that's the one where you're scared to death. Well, because it starts, yeah, especially if it's if you're a newbie. Yeah, you know, or yeah. if you've had limited number of rounds. It was interesting. Sned's uh, interview last night with Faraday uh, when he was actually when he won the Pub Links and he was invited to go as an mm -hmm. amateur and play there. Yeah. and he took uh, real advantage of that to the point where they almost kicked him off the golf course. Yeah. Because literally from the time that he won the Pub Links and got the invitation to play at Augusta, uh, he, he had recorded like 60 to 70 rounds at Augusta National yeah. before the tournament. 
I'd hate what he paid for flipping caddy fee, though. <laughs> he's, 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 it was a good thing his dad's a lawyer and his yeah. mom owns a pawn store. Yeah. But, uh, again, Sneds, he said he was going down there every weekend, and he was doing 54, 54, 54. He said he was just down there just wearing it out. And then, of course, he said that did not really set him up for tournament. Yeah. Because he says playing the golf course is one thing, but, boy, on Thursday morning when those lights turn on, he said, that's when the event surely yeah. starts. When you start seeing ropes and people. <laughs> and then, right, but, right. But, but give him credit. I mean, literally his first time there as a professional, as a professional, and he is on Sunday going on the back nine in the lead. He is there with the leaders. And, of course, he throws it into the creek on 13 and, you know, just – Pretty much ruins his chances yeah. there. Yeah, well, so um, that's the thing. Just get, and I wish they'd go back to the old on, on seventeen on Sunday, the old pin placement where it was back right. Remember when Hope had a chance to win? He hit it over the green. <laughs> the pin was back right on that hump. On on sixteen. On seventeen. On seventeen. When they used to put it back right on Sunday, and Hoke hit it over the green and hit that oh, big flop that's shot back. Right. Up there. That's they right. have they have they have not gone back to that pin in the last probably eight ten years. Yeah, but. Uh, that's a great pin. That's a great pin. That is I a agree. great <laughs> pin. That's on that shelf. That's one of those. Well, it's normally areas. back there on day two. So you know, I, I, are you saying on Sunday they should have it yeah, back there? Because they put it over left behind the bunker, and it's a cakewalk pin. Yeah. Put it back right to where you. But you know be what? Perfect. They've got to add. Are you remember got the to, putting up across the thing? But hold on a minute. I mean, what? Well, even remember in '86 when Jack won it, the pin was a little bit middle right. Yeah. Because he had to come from the back left side with yeah. the sloping uh, left to right breaker. Yeah. And you know that's as fast as 20 on the stint meter. Sure. But now I think for television, they've moved that pin up behind that bunker. Uh, just simply to add to, is he going to be able to carry the bunker? Is he going to get it on the right slope? Is he going to be able to make the putt? But see, I think if they put it back on top of that hump I, up I there, agree you with got him hitting short and it rolling back down there by the bunker or it rolling right. off to the left or if you hit it over the green, you're dead. I agree. I, I just agree. think, I just missed that. I think that's a great pin placement. Well, again, I want to thank everyone for joining us here on TGD TV and, of course, thegolfdirector.com. Uh, we've been going through Augusta National and talking about the Masters. Of course, this programming will continue, and all of our programs are now available on demand at TGD TV. So you can go to www.thegolfdirector.com, look under TGD TV, and you'll be able to pull us up. You can pull up all of our programs and just watch us there. So not only do you get to hear us and learn and listen and have fun with us, but now you can watch us doing it. So uh, they get to put a face to a name. You know what? <laughs> I mean, absolutely like all of this right here yeah okay well, so they get to see all that at least it's not turning out baby good to see you thank you for coming in great to be here thank you brother you got it love you friend. bud you too man george honeycutt hugh roy the third al cloyd bringing you coverage of the majors we ask that you come back and join us again as we continue our coverage of the masters <laughs>